industry is very colorist, but I don't cry about it. And I remember one particular um, video I was invited out and it was a bunch of girls there. And this is like one of the biggest rappers in the world still mm -hmm. to this day. When he walked on the set, you he said it. It was not. He tried to hide it. He didn't try to whisper it. He came on was like, where the other girls at? Where the rest of the girls at? The red, the red, where the red girls at? Y'all already know what I told y'all to bring. And I'm thinking, dang, I ain't even that dark. Uh, a lot of people didn't know I I wrote for people. Can you share some of the artists that you uh, wrote for? <laughs> I have been in writing sessions for Cardi B. I feel like at this point, everybody has writers. I've been in a session before and it was 14 people there. Well, now you on Love & Hip Hop and you beefing with Rini Rucci. And y'all was arguing over writing. Our beef started was when I reached out to her, I was respectful. I'm like, hey, I'm Amy Luciani. Like, I wrote this record with this girl and she went off and blocked me. So from there, baby, I'm from Detroit. It was up after that. Ferrari said he thinks you and Mozzie are back together. I was sitting on that man last night. to the Baller Alert show is OCT. What up? It's your boy, you know BT. We got a special guest in the building. You want to introduce yourself since you already doing radio. Okay, you already know. <laughs> I'm here. It's Amy Luciani, y'all. The bag lady. Detroit stand up. Atlanta stand up. Let's do it. Detroit yeah. was popping my baby. What up, y'all? What up, y'all? <laughs> yeah, make sure y'all like, subscribe, do all that. Yo, yep. we finna get into it. I'm ready. I'm all ready. Right, you hosting the show with us. All right? yeah. I'm hosting the show. I feel yeah. really special. Am yeah. I important? Duh. Yeah. Okay. That's why you here. You know, <laughs> people can say I be too humble. I be coming places sometime and be like, y'all want me here? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you, guys. Yes, thank girl, you. you're shining. You're looking good. Oh, thank you. Like a million bucks. Thank you. All right, here we go. I love my jewelry at home. Um... <laughs> You got the earrings on. Don't get it twisted. They no, I are, got, I got, I got, I got, I got one in. I left. I, I lost the other one. Um, I don't know how. Oh, I look, I got a secret. Look, one is missing. Just in case you missed it. Tory Lanez, mm. ten years. Mm. What's y'all thoughts about that? Do y'all think it's fair? I'm gonna say this. I'm not a girl who fears cancellation of the culture. I felt like it was excessive. I felt like, damn, ten. I, it was so many loops in this story for me that I literally couldn't pick a side and go with him or her. Mm -hmm. But I know, I'm just, yeah. No, I think it was excessive. I think it was a little bit uh, excessive as well. Um, the reason why I say that, because honestly, I thought Tory Lanez was going to get off. You did? I, I honestly thought he was going to get off because, and OCT, I know you're looking at me crazy. This is why I'm going to say this, because <laughs> when they were, it was so much stuff going on, like, back and forth. Like, it was just such a great, It like, was weird. Trial. Like, we, it's like all the information. You don't really know what's going on uh, based on what they was telling us. And I seen where they said that they couldn't find um, his his handprints on the gun. That blew me away. So, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but it, I'm thinking like everybody else. Like, okay, if you can't, if if this guy supposedly shot her. Where's the prints? Where's, where's his handprints on his gun? That mm -hmm. would be on the gun if yeah. you did it. Yeah. I think it was uh, more so the cockiness and him yeah. spreading it. It was an example being set, I think, yeah. with this. Yeah, because um, didn't they allege, was well, alleged that he was leaking the information to academics mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. We allegedly, were allegedly that. because uh, Megan posted that, yo, how are you getting this information? We ain't even went to we, court we not, yet. We ain't even inside the courtroom yeah. yet. You, you know, you posting this stuff. So it was an arrogance that was, because it was such a big yeah. conversation. I felt like on his end, he was kind of coming out already like, I'm going to win this. Mm -hmm. And it was people. And I was thinking the same thing. I was like, the way he was acting, because, you know, allegedly he punched August Alcina. He know, didn't sit, he didn't relax when it was time to. Then he went to Rolling Loud right. and he and he broke his, um, you know, he had to stay away from her. Then he was playing voicemails. I don't know if you knew. It's like voicemails being played on one of his mixtapes. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. made him remove it. I'm like, bro, you need to be quiet right now. Listen, and remorseful. <laughs> Essentially, what you're in court for is to prove that you are a human being that's, you know, privileged to be out here in the right. free world. But when you doing all these things outside of court, when you come in, you just looked at as a menace. So it doesn't matter how good of a lawyer yeah. that you have. They looking at you as like, 
okay, you 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 want to convince the jury that you're innocent and that, Being you, loud that and you're not capable of doing something like right. this. But when we looking on the internet, it's showing that, you know, allegedly you punching August Alcina in the face and, you know. And said that you didn't and that kind of came, that's what really affected him, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think remember, that's what affected him too. remember he denied it fully yep. and then the clip oh, came yeah. out and it was yep. like, Tori, what the? Yeah. And then he um, said that he would be proven innocent that was one of his last tweets or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. I think I stopped really giving my opinion on social media because I was following following it like everybody mm-hmm. else. But when she said that they were never sexual, and oh, that yeah. came out oh, that they yeah. were, I promise you, that's when I really was like, I went and took down a lot of tweets, and I was like, let me just sit back and just shut up because you were standing with her at first. I was I was like, she didn't sleep with him. Like, oh, maybe this was a reaction of a mm-hmm. man being jealous or whatever, mm-hmm. being rejected. But when the courts prove that they had been, mm-hmm. you know, together. Yeah. I was like, Amy, shut up. Don't even talk about this. It was such a weird trial. This because, is crazy. But I think, um, you know, I think it's sad on both parts, man, because, you know, Megan, this is something that she's going to have to deal with the rest of her life and her it career. Is. And we got to see another black man, unfortunately, but go at to least prison. She get a g- career. Yeah. She yeah. still has a chance. Because he's getting out. I just saw he's getting out, I think, at 47 if he does the full term. I don't think he's going to do the full term. I don't he's, either. He's, yeah. No, cele- I, no celebrity thing, ever does the full But even a few years away from your kids when it's like, over but what? But one thing we do know for sure, he's going, he going back to Canada. Oh, he's oh, he going getting, back. He get, oh, he getting deported? Oh, he oh, is yeah. going back. As soon as you done here, you going back to Canada, buddy. They not even about to play. Yeah, I, I wouldn't wish prison on nobody. Yeah, no, especially teen I watched years. I watched too many crazy prison <laughs> stuff that you see in movies, and I was like, that's not right. a place that I think anybody should should be should living. Be. Oh, for sure. And then when you coming from such a successful life and all mm-hmm. the fight, all the money, imagine it's different being a multi-millionaire going to prison. And it's yeah. different being black going to prison, because I'm pretty sure his experience isn't the same as Chrisley's. It's oh Todd no! Oh no! But you know he's no. he's gonna uh, he's gonna be what I was reading about. He's gonna be in high, higher power, uh, which is protective custody. So he's gonna be on lockdown majority of the time. Tori. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. When you're a celebrity, you you know. I don't. Is that good or bad? All them years I, on lockdown and I I don't know. They but, put me out there with the wolves. <laughs> I'm not trying to be in my little yeah, corner cubicle. On. Yeah, because no. th- imagine you being locked down for like. 90% of the day. No. Mm-mm. no. Another sad case, man. Raven Simone was encouraged to get surgery uh, by her father. I had um, two breast reductions in lipo before I turned 18. My dad suggested strongly that I should get my breast reduced. He was like, so you don't feel bad. Is there anything you want? And I was like, what? I was like, yeah. If I get lipo, will people stop calling me fat? That's sick. That is that's, sick. That's, that's sick. That's, that's, that's so sad, man. It's yeah. like people don't even allow people to be people. People who so cares funny. about somebody being fat or skinny or right. big or tall. And your dad is pushing it. Why is her her father telling her some it, stuff like before that? Before 18. Yeah. Like cause she had weird. she was she had a hit TV show. That's all Raven. This is that's all Raven yeah. days, you know? Yeah, she and, was um, booming. But nobody she nobody was. nobody was on that show ever thought she was fat. Like I I, I never I watched thought that Raven show was fat. Up. I never then but she said she was being told that. So Hollywood. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. That's she she Hollywood just looked like thing. my cousin when, exactly. I was, when I was growing up. That I'm was like, normal so, for us yeah. looking at her. It's just like Jennifer Hudson. She said she didn't know she was fat until she left Chicago, until she left her comfort zone. You know, we we don't see it as that. But, you know, and, and when Raven was hot, she first off, she's a child star. But when yeah. she really, you know, came and peaked mm-hmm. with that so Raven, mm-hmm. you got to think about it. You know, you had all the skinny girls at that time. They were trying you know, to stay oh, under yeah. 100 pounds yeah. around that area. Yeah, size area. twos. But I feel like around. everybody in Hollywood is skinny. And especially, but especially <laughs> Are at trying that time. to be, are killing themselves to become skinny like yeah. that. Beyonce was skinny back then, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. going on diets to, yep. to, to look a certain mm-hmm. way. Yep. That was that time. Now, uh, they trying to look thicker. It's you more know, yeah, I was about to say, time, time has changed. Yeah. Time has changed. You got the big girl supermodels now. Mm-hmm. But that's why you shouldn't be help telling kids to change their bodies so yeah. early because look mm-hmm. how times have changed. Mm-hmm. Where you at one point, obviously the BBL was like the big thing in our community. Now, if you look, all those celebrities that people went and followed, they're going back to being slim. They're yeah. going back to being fit. And now people are starving themselves to go back to it. Like when I was growing up, I didn't even know nothing about what surgery was. I thought surgery was like if you broke your leg. 
Me too. You know what I'm saying? Me too. That was like these yeah. kids nowadays in you know, middle school, yeah. high school, they know what like BBLs are. Yeah. So I would I would never know what any of those things were, you know, Back when I was then. Yeah. yeah. It's social media. Yeah. We're in a time where we are just overdoing a lot. Yeah. I'm around so many girls that just change so quick in front of me and it's it's social media. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of girls changing on Lizzo right now because uh, six more girls have come out and uh, said that she created a hostile work environment. Six and, more? Um, some of the mm. new complaints saying that she's failed to pay them. All these employees worked on her Watch Out for the Big Girls, Amazon series, and her tour. What What are they looking to gain from this situation? Because Some money. Some money. Okay. So, Lizzo, just pay these people so they go away. Once she starts doing that, and it's like, okay, she's just gonna pay out. Yeah. If she starts these settling allegations people, are wild. Yeah, I think if she starts settling with people, they're gonna think it's true. It is, yeah. But well, if you don't pay them, it's giving like it, it's like it's just gonna get dragged out. Like, yeah. you know what I always wonder? This is what I always wonder. Every time we look up and we see like you know celebrities, mm-hmm. they're they're getting uh, sued or allegations. Why is always it's like it's 20 more people just come out of the suddenly. blue? Suddenly. Everybody's vocal suddenly. Everybody's. I'm That's like, the part that makes it always sketchy for me. Because I'm me like, too. where were you? If this happened to you a year ago, why are you speaking up now? Well, finally, somebody used their voice while I'm feeling, you know, brave enough to do it. All 20 of y'all. Right. I and I mean, if if she did do that, you know, I hope they get um, I hope they get paid and I hope they get taken care of. If they really were in a hostile environment and, you know, they were forced to do things that they didn't want to do. It's just one time for me to feel like what these girls are seeing where it was some sexual weirdness going on. I'm, I'm a dismiss I'm, myself. I'm dismissing myself. Mm-hmm. And you don't got to worry about me coming back. I'm suing you because... You got your one time to put me in that position, yeah. but they yep. were alleging they just kept dealing with it. And that's the part that's like, when is y'all, where is y'all accountability? Yeah. If you kept coming with your old crazy tail self, you kept showing up and mm-hmm. it was just, it got to the point it was unbearable. You didn't have to come back after the first time. Mm-hmm. That's how adults, I feel. If your boss did anything and told you to do something that you were not comfortable doing, you have every opportunity to leave. Mm-hmm. Every opportunity. Well, like, I had to, t- I had to touch a dick, and yeah, um, like, and then you what? know what? I'm then thinking, you probably touched that dick and was like, I probably, get, I could probably sue this bitch for having to touch this dick. Because I'm just trying to see why did, why would Lizzo have had to be so hands on to be like, come here, you're gonna touch this, like. Was it nah. your team? Was they were trying Lizzo? to. I think that's they were trying real. to hang out with her, like trying to be cool. I, and that's the problem. The thing is, they don't know the difference. Like, I'm not your friend. That's not I'm your, your boss. Friend. But a lot of a lot of a lot of these like pe- these workers, they be trying to get with these celebrities and be hanging around. They be like, damn, this nigga smoke crack. I didn't know that. He tried yeah. to get me to smoke some crack. See, like, that's why you gotta work and then don't go and hang go out with home. your boss. Yeah, don't, don't go do hang that. out and have cocktails with your boss. All that fraternizing. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's that's the real problem. What's up, y'all? It's Amy Luciani, and you are now tuned in to the Baller Alert Show. Back with more of the Baller Alert Show. Amy Luciani hanging out with us. What up, Baller Alert? Yeah, we've been doing some talking going we've on. We've been yeah. talking. I'm <laughs> talking about my mind. I'm just thinking all this mess that's going on in yeah. the world. Yeah, but now it's all about you, man. We yep. want to know a little bit more about Amy mm-hmm. Luciani. Yes. Is, are you half Italian, or where's Luciani? I am fully black, baby. Okay. With an Italian stage name. Okay. But it's, it's the story behind it. All right, well, let us know where that came from. First, okay. where are you, you from Detroit, you said? Yep. I've been in Atlanta for some years, um, just pursuing the music, really just working my business, working my brand. My government name is Amber Rose. Really? That's, Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, hyphenate. That's my first name. I'm Amber the Rose? real Amber Rose. So okay. I always tell people, like, so many people are confused when they watch my Instagrams or different platforms I'm on. And my original OG fans that's been here from the beginning will be like, oh, I love that Amber Rose. Or Amber Rose, you look so pretty at that. And people be like, bitch, I mean, why you calling her Amber Rose? Like, <laughs> they be like, I'm so confused. I'm like, see, y'all don't even know. Yeah. You don't even know yeah, who you, you talking you to. You ain't the day one. Exactly. What's your middle name? It's no middle name. Okay, oh, you don't have Amber a middle Rose. name? Nope. Okay. It's just Amber Rose. Okay. My grandmother's name is Rose Marie. Nice. So, when Amber Rose was like really popping and really like doing her thing, this around the Kanye time, I was doing a lot of musical shows and open mic. This is like the first stage of being a rapper. Like, I'm... In Detroit? A, yeah. No, I was in Atlanta. Okay. I moved here right out of high school. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, um, 
I was just doing a lot of performances. And of course, it's my government name. So it's Amber Rose on all the flyers. And it would be so many awkward positions where I would be in, like where people might show up at different events and be like, I saw the name Amber Rose on here. Like, you're black. I'm so confused. Who are you? And I'm like, that's my name. What's this other girl named Amber Rose? And I start getting hip to her. And I'm like, what the hell? And from there, I was sitting there and I'm like, I'm so tired of asking. I mean, being being asked a question like, mm-hmm. why are you going with the name Ambrose? Why'd you copy this girl from New York? You know, and I just got tired of pulling out the ID like, no, nah, what were you saying, baby? So that's what made you change that's the name. not her real name. No shade. <laughs> that's not her real name. So I'm like, how I'm copying the name that's not even her name. This is my government name. So one day I just came up with the artist name. I was just like, you know what? Let's switch it up. Let's do a little quick reinvention. How'd you come with Amy, though? I was always giving guys the name Amy in the club. Just like, if I didn't want to talk to them, I was always Amy. So that was your alter ego? Always. So many guys <laughs> like, you remember me, Amy? Mm, I know that was something I was ignoring. <laughs> if a dude used to say Amy to me, I knew I wasn't interested. You'd be like, you, you called me what? That's That was the, that was that the red was flag. It. Yeah. Or a dude would say, like, hey, Amy is so-and-so. I'm like, oh, I definitely did not really want to get him my number. So Amy was always a funny thing with me and my friends. Like, Amy, they'll bring me to somebody like, yeah, you told him you're you're Amy. Yes, friend, I'm Amy. That's my name. No, Yo, I think we all do that. I, I have a name, <laughs> you, too. You, you do I that, do, too? I do different names, though. I could be you Keisha, do different? Keisha, so, that's, yeah. so that's the thing that women do? It's a thing we do when we don't want to be bothered. All your friends know before you go in, who you going to be? Okay, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be yeah. that. All right. I never knew that. Oh, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. CBT, you look good. You don't. You probably wasn't getting that. <laughs> we was giving that to guys in the club for sure. So I'd be, what's up, Amy? I'd be like, oh hey. Sometimes I forget myself. So when I was like, thinking like, of who this, the hell are you talking to? Yeah, I'm like, who is everybody Amy? ain't seen that Living Single uh, episode where Max gave her name as Shaquan, and the dude was like, Shaquan, you gonna ignore me all night? I'm lame. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. Okay. Okay. I gotta watch it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it either. It's all good. Don't take our don't take our black card now. Take it because I still haven't. I'm not going there. I haven't seen a movie that. Oh, that was a that's living. That's the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But it's a movie I haven't seen. If I told y'all, but I'm not. No, tell us. Y'all would take my black card. No. Y'all not gonna both said it. No. I haven't seen Best Men. Oh, I, I've seen. Or Boys in the Hood yet. Wait, you ain't seen Boys in the Hood? No. She's giving Amy. Yes. She's definitely giving Amy. <laughs> and everybody react like that. I haven't seen Boys in the Hood yet. That's a classic. Amen. I know. I can't just take it. the time out to go see it. Yeah. I try to, y'all. I try. I've literally tried to sit and watch it. Something always happens. I never can watch the like. And then you'll but, see a lot of the stars in there that are that are like star- Morris Chestnut yeah. and all the stars. You well, she don't. She ain't seen Best Man. So yeah, I haven't seen Best but Man. But you seen either. two could play that game before. With Vivica Fox. Yeah, I have seen that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm gonna take. Well, I'm gonna take that as a no. Back in the day, you wasn't watching movies. We, uh, girl, so. I've been doing the music <laughs> since a kid. Okay. Like, literally mm-hmm. so on TV stuck. doing this. My mom did not play. We was me and my sisters were in a singing group. We were on a tour. We used to be the open act for Bow Wow, Jermaine Dupri, B2K. What was oh, the group wow. name? Entrance. Okay. We was four little middle schoolers rapping in Detroit, all four of us. So I didn't get to really see a lot of the stuff. But, you know, I sit down sometime and when friends tell me, like, girl, there ain't no way you haven't heard this or watched this. I'll sit down and catch up. But I'm typically late to a lot of the yeah. stuff. Your that's, mama was Joe or something. She or, was definitely. Or, yes. And that's funny. My mom's I hope not Joe. name is... Last name was Jackson and first name started with a J. Hmm. So people, my friends used to be like, your mom is scary. She's Joe Jackson. Like, are y'all still up there rehearsing? Oh, yes, we still are. Wow. <laughs> but but you real. know, that's that's good because listening to your story, uh, it kind of reminds me of like Coco Jones story, right? Like how she was talking about how long she was doing music oh and God. stuff like that. And it really just shows you how long it actually takes to actually really do this business. It is not something that happens overnight. I just posted a clip of my sisters and I on um, the Jenny Jones show. I was 12. I was 12 performing. And so when someone sent it, they said, Amy, is this you on this show? And I'm like, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, yes, that was me. (laughs) And your sisters, where are they at? Do they still do music? So I, I will always tell people it doesn't happen overnight. Like mm-hmm. the success, don't even put a date on it. If you really love what you're doing, it's just going to happen. But if you're sitting there like, I'm giving myself the next summer to become a, baby, you in the wrong business already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You already start wrong. So did your mom uh, push you to go to Atlanta to, to still do music? Or? She did. My mom still manages me to this day. My oh, mom's that's still dope. my ma- momager for all my sisters. One is a tattoo artist. One is a set and design creative person. So... 
my mom definitely I told her right out of high school like yeah I'm leaving Detroit there's no way I'm gonna be here like trying to be great yeah. and she was like go you should go and then she moved the same year here okay so now we are all, now all of us are here all your sisters all of us shout out to mom. that's support right there <laughs> yeah. yes. a lot of people don't get that my mom day one support so finding your footing in music what was the uh what was the that breakthrough moment i would say the breakthrough moment for me was um really when i stopped trying to go after a deal and really like had these goals of i'm assigned to this person i was putting too much on the calendar of like dates and timelines and deadlines and when I stopped doing that and was like, no, you're just going to go out there. You're going to be a music artist. You're going to meet people and network and let it come to you versus I think every art, independent artist or artist at that has a moment where it's like you feel this little desperation. Mm. You've been doing it for a minute. You kind of feel like, no, like I'm going to go ahead and sign to them. I'm a when I stop looking at things like deadline dates, kind of, I feel like things change. So now everything I do is like, this is what I want to do. It's going to come to me. Mm. It's like everything changed in my career when I stopped. I say being thirsty for it, but people will say, Amy, you've never been thirsty, but I felt that I wanted it too bad at one point. And I was like, dang, I'm like putting these dates and stuff. And I met a person, they were like, just do it. Stop trying to put a date and cap a date on what's going to happen. You love doing this, girl, just wake up and do it. And I feel like that's what just changed everything for me. That's what a lot of the greats um, talk about as well, about how people are, you know, they want to be successful in this business so bad. So bad. And they forget to, like, have fun, enjoy, enjoy this, and not it. think about the money and not think about those things because those things are going to eventually come. <laughs> but um, I forgot who posted this on Instagram. Somebody said, if you're not willing to be broke for 10 years, then don't get into the entertainment business. This is true. And that was probably the realest quote that I've ever seen about the, the entertainment business. Yeah. If you know, as an artist, what we really go through, like a hundred doors to get one, the average person can't take a hundred doors. Yeah. It, it just breaks their 100 spirit. A hundred no's. My bad, yeah. A, a lot of people cannot take a hundred no's. It, it, it feels like, Okay, you have a moment in your career like maybe this ain't for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the ones that make it and they really go and have these long careers, I'll be sitting there like, I have nothing bad to say. Cause to make it that far, trust me, they sat in a lot of meetings where they were told, not good enough, not pretty enough, or he doesn't look that. Mm -hmm. And to make it, it's like, child, if you knew what we go through to break a little bit of a stride, it's not an easy thing to do. So, I just got so much respect for a lot of artists. Yeah. That's why I don't really pick the size on this girl, the Nicky's, the Cardi's. I'm like, so that so that doesn't that doesn't upset you. You don't you don't feel like the uh, the industry is like colorist. Yeah, I do, but I don't let it upset me. Yeah, like I'm I'm so different. The industry is very colorist, but I don't cry about it because mm -hmm. I live it every day. Every day I wake up, right, like this. I deal with it on so many levels, but. It's been happening so long that I feel like to start crying and complaining and overshadowing the music and what I'm here to do with the blogs eating up. Amy's talking about colorism again. Like, I've already talked about it. People were, like, agreeing. A lot of big celebrities, like, writing, like, girl, I've been through that. Keep your head up. Now it's like, you just got to live around it and in it. But it is a real thing in the industry. So you really feel like the labels are pushing light skin rappers or for sure then the numbers the numbers prove it. it's a historic thing it's not a new thing it's a historic thing that lighter looks brighter and looks more appealing to the eye and it looks more endorsable and more it's true you're gonna get maybe you have to get like one or two token black girls that really rap in the game every so couple years every couple years like but it's so many more of us that are so talented and the conversation like why isn't so and so made and so and so she's so talent talented I'd be sitting there looking like mm. I can assure you right now if she bleached herself just a little bit went a little blonde and did a little lighter I, you will see a, a stride start happening little by little it's factual yes can you share an experience of a, of a color situation that you've personally dealt with oh for sure um <laughs> I can, I'll share two actually, but one quick one. The first one that I encountered, it was like, 
Whoa. Mm. Um, few years ago, when I was doing like, I would do video girl work, meaning on a professional level, if they needed a video model, I had a person that was kind of booking me and I would go. And I remember one particular um, video I was invited out and it was a bunch of girls there. And this is like one of the biggest rappers in the world still mm -hmm. to this day. And I remember being in the back and it was me and it was about two other. One girl was my color, but one was probably dark as this mic, mm -hmm. but she was just gorgeous. Drop that dead gorgeous, right? And I remember kind of being in the back and they had sub sandwiches for everybody. And we happened to be in this one area where you can hear this, this artist when he walked on the set, you he said it. It was not. He tried to hide it. He didn't try to whisper it. He came on and was like, where the other girls at? Where the rest of the girls at? The red, the red, where the red girls at? Y'all already know what I told y'all to bring. They were like, we have a lot of them. We have only like five brown skin girls. He straight up was like, they're not doing, get the girls I asked for to come. And I hear the girl like, I don't know if she was an assistant. I don't know who she was, but we can hear. We're right there on the set, but we're kind of away. But I'm sitting there eating a sandwich like, he ain't even trying to whisper this. And the girls were like, we're used to this. And I said, it's sad. I've never encountered this. Mm. But the girl dark like this was like, I deal with it every video I pop up to. Yeah. And I was like, you still Man. do it. He literally was like, this ain't what I asked for. Where's the light skinned girls? Like one or two of them can stay, but all five of them, no. I had never heard that before. And I'm thinking, dang, I ain't even that dark, but... If, if I was, mm -hmm. they dismissed us off the set. I promise you. Wow. First of all, we sat for about two hours and I was sitting there like, I should really get up and leave myself. But just being transparent, I was broke around that time. I had bills. We were getting paid a decent check. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to see this through because I need the money. Mm -hmm. But a little bit of me sat there and was just like, this is disgusting that we're here dealing with this. And this person is blacker than me. This artist mm. is darker than me who said it two times darker than me and I, I just was like dang for sure and I'm pretty sure you probably was a fan of them and then it probably kind of turned you off with, with their music Look, it, it, I, I was definitely turned off I don't listen to this artist to this day and this artist has said several things out loud about brown skinned women and liking them red better he's still doing it to this day but I stopped being a fan years ago but to see when I see like black women still like commenting and supporting them I just be still confused, but again, I'm a lane rider. I know how to shut my mouth, but I know I don't support them at mm -hmm. all. So, um, another time I was had an opportunity through a agency I was with that they were looking for a model to be like on a book cover. It was a black author, and they were the agency. You know, they pulled me and a couple girls, and they accidentally put me in the wrong email chat where the person who booked it was his agents hit the agency or the manager was like. He does not want a brown skinned girl like he wants Blasian. He wants a black and Asian, you know, a girl mm -hmm. that's mixed. And everybody in the chat voted me to be on the cover of the book. I promise you. They were like, we don't care what all these people in this chat are saying. Mm -hmm. He does not want a brown skinned girl on here. And this was, again, a person who was two times darker than me. So I was like, how did I? It was several girls going for the book. Um opportunity however that went and I was excited because after weeks of them doing a negotiation when they added me to the email they were like Amy they picked you like everybody on here wanted you and then a person came in I'm sure she meant to send it separately but she went into the email and was like he does not want a brown skin girl on the cover like we made that clear and next thing you know next day I got the text sorry Amy <sighs> you know we all picked you but they want to go a different route I was like I was on the email I saw you weren't supposed to be on that one sorry I was like, wow. wow, that's weird, but okay. You just got to learn to live around it for real, for mm -hmm. real. But it's yeah. a thing. Self-hate is very re real. And does that make you feel any type of way towards lighter skin people? No, not at all. It, it, if anything, makes me feel sad for us as a community because this has been something we've been dealing with for a long time. This isn't an overnight conversation. It's one of them conversations that when people have it, us brown skin girls kind of look like crybabies so to save face a lot of us don't talk about it but it's a conversation that if you probably put 10 dark skinned women in the room some of the stories will be probably horrific of how they tried to pin us against when it's like my mentality is you can be dark skinned light skinned white brown and be beautiful you can be light skinned and not be that appealing to the eyes you can be dark skinned and not be appealing but 
it's sad that it's our community that does it. You don't hear white people saying it. You don't hear even really Caribbean people. It's more of us that's that conversation of she's lighter, she look better. It's not even other ethnicities saying it. So to me, it's like, I don't know. I just try to be more inclusive with my music. I do a lot of music, big and, you know, brown skin women up. I have been on the chopping block for that. I just recently ended up on a blog for a comment that I responded to a song I put out and the girl said, it's funny that you only put dark skinned women in the video. You're being just how you're saying people are. But my thought process was typically y'all wouldn't put none of them in the video. I made sure I put all of them. And I purposely put some girls that weren't what you would call a fine girl. Some of them was big. Some of them had what people would consider nappy hair. I was like, I love it. I want you to be in the video with your afro and all. And people were like, where are the light skinned girls? Where are the white girls? You're really the prejudiced one. And I'm like, listen, you can't win this war, but I'm going to make them feel beautiful for a time in a video. And I did it and I felt good looking at the video like, they deserve to shine and be made to feel pretty, even if the world is saying they're not. So, child, I'm doing it for us. Yeah. I'm in the black woman experience. I'm a dark skinned girl with regular black woman hair under this wig. And I'm doing it for us. My experience isn't of white women or of light skin. So my music does typically be black girl, put, you know, keep your head up. Nappy head black girl, the hair is beautiful. I have to say it because I live the experience of people don't say it to us enough. So why mm. would I not say it in my music? You know what I mean? I don't I don't really understand how people be confused with me sometimes when I'm like, you're black and beautiful and I say it all the time. And it's like, what about us? I'm not talking about y'all right now. I'm talking about what I'm seeing and y'all need to see the reflection of how I look and know you look beautiful. I so you can't win that basically. Right, no, I think that's a part of being the change you want to see. You know, and with you doing that in your music and stuff like that. And it's just amazing to see how you persevere through all that and yeah. becoming the success that you are today. And that is very, uh, I commend you for that. Thank you. Um, what was one of your, uh, what was your successful moment? Like the the moment that you was like, okay, I, I'm, I got it now. I would say my first successful moment um, would be my first big writing session. Uh, a lot of people didn't know I I wrote for people, but you know, in that um, that part of the industry, you can't really be as vocal. Like, hey, I wrote her song. Mm -hmm. Like, my name is on. So I, I felt really good that I always wanted to write for big artists. And when I got a call to be in a writing session with four of like some of the biggest songwriters in our area, mm -hmm. like when I called, I kind of felt like, am I supposed to be in this room? It was it was crazy when I got there and that was my first time in my career feeling like oh my god it's actually you are being heard sometimes it feel like you aren't as an independent artist um, when you haven't made it big or the number one record you know like people say or, or charting in general so when I walked in the room and I sat there and people were like Amy like, we heard some of your references we heard some of your songs we heard so and so song we didn't know you wrote that or co-wrote it I was like wow I didn't even know y'all even knew me or were talking about me. So that really encouraged me. They were like, girl, we've been talking about you for about two years, actually. And I was like, dang, you don't really know that some people know you and things. My mentality changed. I How was did like, they get the uh, stuff? Did you, did you have a manager or, so, or was it your mom doing it was, all that? Um, I had a situation with Red Bull Publishing and was sitting down and was negotiating some work with them mm -hmm. and two other songwriters. Um, shout out to London J too. He writes. Yeah, big for, shout out to London J. Yeah, that's, that's the homie. Definitely my homie, and that's that's like a mentor to me. Um, as far he's a secret weapon uh, about a lot of uh, a lot of Great females records. rappers. He he is the one. <laughs> he is the one. Like London, I do this to him when I see him. Like so, um, shout out to him. But yeah, I end up in a writing session with him and a couple other people. And when they were like, "Yeah, we heard some stuff you wrote. What do you mean you're shocked to be here?" I was like, "I just." because I haven't had this opportunity before, that changed everything for me. Because mm -hmm. I used to, I, from there I was like, you gotta stop working and being great to hear somebody say, we heard it, Amy. Because I learned that day, sometimes they don't even tell you they heard you, but they're hearing you and fans and they were pulling up references like, we got this reference in our email with all these songwriters months ago and it was you. And I was like, what? Y'all yeah. in LA? They're like, yes, Amy. 
So from there, I'm like, girl, you are that girl. Okay. What are, uh, can you share some of the artists that you uh, wrote for? I can tell you some writing sessions I've been in. Okay. I, that's how you have to do that legally. Um, really? I've been in some, yeah. I can tell okay. you some, yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> just, a, just a couple of writing sessions. I have <laughs> been in writing sessions for Cardi B. Okay. And that's, I'll leave it at that. That was the huge, that was my most biggest opportunity. Okay. Um, and I was the only girl in the room with all the male writers. So mm. can you give us an example of what a writing session is like for people who yes. may be curious? Yes. So a writing session, um, you'll get obviously you know your confidential email through whoever you're working with, or if you have a pub deal or a label deal, and they will tell you like which label is looking for songs. And they'll tell you what type of songs they're looking for, meaning so-and-so has a 10-song album and it's about to come out. The last two records, they wanted to be uh, maybe Club Boppy Fun or a deep record. It's like, heart bro, got dumped, he let, you know. And depend on what your writing cadence is, you might get the email like, hey, it's a session coming in. Um, you want to be a part of it. You don't know who you're walking in there. Like, I've walked in with London J before and been like, what's up, London? Don't know how excited I am to be here with you, but... Um, you don't know you, who you're coming into and sometimes you don't even know the artist that you're mm. writing for. Sometimes you might have a publishing deal, a, a pub deal and get in there and it's like, oh yeah, you're writing for, I don't want to name somebody who writes for themselves, but whoever's been vocal about not writing for themselves, you might come in and be like, who, who's working on this? That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> you might come in and be like, I'm for real? Like how many songs does she need? Well, they really only need one. And it's literally 20 people sometimes trying to get theirs to be picked 20 people up. writing on one song? For sure. Sean Garrett kind of shared that with us. It's like a whole bunch of people, and they're just like fighting for that chance fighting. to get on the uh, album. And, and sometimes you're not fighting. That That's the sentence, a chance to be on the album, because sometimes you can write the whole verse. Mm -hmm. And when you hear it and how y'all negotiate and work it, it end up being you only got one sentence of what you said that was dope out of it and then this other songwriter he got the second sentence you're like damn but then you know the artists want to get their their credit too so they can just take something they hear and then say well I want to rework it like this and, and now you get in the points on the, on the mm -hmm. split sheet oh oh it gets real ugly and dirty you can and, and that's why songwriters are always trying to write I feel like at this point everybody has writers in it because you know, some of the biggest... I don't understand why it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Because when you look at some of the biggest artists in the world from, you know, years ago, like, you look at people like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson wasn't writing no songs. But right. the objective of the music game is to sell records. And whatever sells the best is what they want. So Facts. if you're writing something that sounds like on the, what's on the radio you're more than likely going to get that job. And you're going to be on a, like a two-year run because it's sounds in the industry where it's a moment where it's like everything. Y'all remember the Roscoe Dash moment where everybody was like, nah, nah, nah. it was just a and sound. snap music. Snap yeah. music. They're going to send in the power writers that are quiet in the back like, oh, this is what I do. I write all the snap the finger type hits. It's like a cadence for every type of songwriter. London J works well with everybody, but he's really good with women. The yep. female rappers. That's How what, is that's he able what to write so much of that? And he's like the most. That's what I heard. I heard. That's what. That's why I was like London. London he's J a writes beast. a lot for for a but lot of people. What makes him? What makes him a beast is because he's selling the records. He's selling the records. And if you are making the most money, they want you every time. Yeah, and he I'm don't getting. miss. So 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 basically, you can write the record, and then it can be ten. I've been in a session before, and it was fourteen people there, and I was just like, oh my god. And when I say they ain't there hungry, they're not in there playing with you. I, I had to learn. Mm. I was missing opportunities when I started because I'm I'm kind I'm the humble girl. Mm -hmm. Like I know my power. I sit there sometime and be like, you don't even know who you're talking to sometime. But I was coming in them sessions so humble and I was seeing how aggressive they are and I had to learn quick. I was like, oh, because I, I remember I was in a session one time, I kid you not, I opened a moment as a songwriter. I went in there. I was, it was like, lay that part down. That was good. We like what you said. I go in there and somebody, a guy came in and was like, yeah, they want me to um, say my part. And I was like, what? Come out. I came out. They were like, 
His part, yeah, we like that better. So you cancel that part that she said, put his one sentence on there. It was aggressive. They was in there like, we want the most on this publishing. We want to be the one to get the most out of it. And you got to be in there ready to fight, not literally. Nature. Yeah, because a lot of people behind the scenes, they not making money like these artists. You're not At going all. to do shows and stuff like that. So your only stream of income is like, I got to get on this I record. I got to get this Cause record. Because it, it takes, you know, a while to get paid is also. It's, not only that, the producer getting 50% of it. Immediately, automatic, so, immediately. Well, it, and that's what uh, we all fifty percent. It's producers break, get fifty. You break down the split, so it's fifty percent for the songwriter, fifty percent for the producer. Now imagine ten people writing on that record. So now they have 50. to be like, you get ten percent, you get five no percent, you get <laughs> y'all. That's the problem. That's why it's like this big outrage. Not even just with TV. It's a real thing. It's not. You got ten people on here writing, and. You getting 50 because you made the beat. And I'm sitting there like, you ain't really saying no money. So what is this beef over songwriters with these females? Like The beef is so catty. And a lot of it is calculated by the labels because the beef sells. So before you drop, if your name was so-and-so and you drop, the week before you drop, you're most likely going to be told to beef with me. Fall out with me. Do something weird where it's like, if everybody's talking about you, that means... Let me just say, if I do... All press is good press. Yeah. If I'm doing probably 1.9 million impressions a week, the people who are superstars, they're probably doing 20 million. If I start a beef with you, that's 20 million people now watching to hear the beef and then you slide in your record on them. Mm. It's such a system that it makes. They're watching you because you're beefing. Slide in the album. Slide in the new merch. Slide in the tape that just dropped. It's a system and girls have fallen so deep into it that now they're not relying on the lyrics no more. Like, the music. It's like, I could do some fake beef and go number one for real, for real. That's just how the game is going because we're in a time where people love to see the girls take their heads off, take each other's heads well, off. The, well, the think of this, and I always tell people, think of all the movies. Think of the movies people got Oscars for. Nobody's mad at them that somebody wrote them a movie that got them an Oscar. Mm. Nobody's mad. Like, this is hip-hop where... You got Angela Bassett, you got Haley Berry, you got all these greats, right? Mm -hmm. Viola Davis. People wrote these movies for them. Yeah. They Facts. wrote Wakanda and they did all of this. They wrote the lines. Nobody's <laughs> sitting there in LA saying, who wrote the best movie for Angela? Who? No, you have never heard that. Mm -hmm. Them fighting over who wrote the scripts for the movies. Why are we talking about that in hip hop though? Why is that like the big thing with the girls? Like, girl, when you get mad at somebody and you don't even write, it's like, yeah, that's that's what? all that, I ever. That's, it? That's, that's all the beef that I ever see. Like all the beef that I see on the internet with female rappers is all about who writes what. And, <laughs> and let me tell you this: I have never had a writer for my own music. I've never had. A, I've never dealt with a every writer female for me. rapper say that. I've never had one. Every female rapper but say that. A, I stand but on she, it. But I, you're a writer. But let me say this though: if that hit come, I take my take me a damn rapper. <laughs> take me a damn writer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people are so scared to be real these days. For it's sure. scary. Because Listen, the object period. of the game is a number one a record. A number one record. Yeah, number one record. You got to think business. Yes. Or, or do you care about the girls being like, oh, Amy finally got a number one, but so and so wrote it. London J can come right now and write it. I will be right there rapping it. Man, I'm yeah. not no business. rapper. I was... people, people have to, to understand that and change with the times. Like hip hop is far from you know, the street corners, we're in the business offices. It's a business, you know business. what I'm saying? And we're just trying to get the best deals. So I, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. I, I had two two labels came about three months ago to one of my sessions at um anywhere at the studio I go to. And I went in there and I recorded the song. At first off, I don't even write my music. Oh. I don't write at all. And when I came out the label, one of the labels was two guys, he's like yeah, they so and so was telling me that you don't write, that you stopped writing two years ago, but we just had to see it because you're a girl. And I was like, well, damn, what that mean? Mm. And they were like, well, we just watched it doesn't really happen like that. And I was like, well, how does it happen? Because I'm still fairly new to a lot of the process with a major female mm -hmm. artist. I haven't been in there 101 to watch it. So I had to learn from them. And they were like, it's typically somebody in there telling them the cadence no you need to say it like this even if you gotta raise your hand up a little more to make it come out more aggressive and they were like we were looking through the glass we were looking for the notebook we were looking for your phone what are you writing it on I was like I'm not I've been rapping since I was 10 I'm not it's like it's kind of in my brain at this point 
but I will get me a songwriter. I respect to take a lot all of the these thoughts out of my head and get me that number one record. So you like a Jay Z and a Lil Wayne? You just go in. The I booth. have been told that. Okay. And they feel very pressure pressure when I do but it. But that's dope because you know it's it's really hard. I feel like to just like just go in there and be like, hey, I'm feeling this. Yeah. And just blurt out however you feeling yeah and it actually comes out and you know and is and is dope how does the payment work as a songwriter it's different so um you can have a label if when i say have a label be signed to a label or you can have a publishing deal which is just more about the songwriting or you can be like me an independent artist um me i've never been signed so when i go into situations for example when i was dealing with red bull i'm more so focused on the points which sometimes are more everlasting than the money, the little bit of money people are getting. And what are points? So it's basically how they break it down. Like you can get it for the rest remainder of the song. As long as you're getting points on the song, it's almost like, it's like a contract basically saying, I might be one of the six writers on here, but I'm getting some points on this record. The points kind of add up if you keep doing different songs, which I haven't done yet. How many but. points can you get? So it's situational. I've had some people who are small time writers, but because they are have had more of a resume of getting hits, some of them get points where they get more points than like a, a London J or a, a mega songwriter mm -hmm. because it's like, look at my history. I'm not going to come here if y'all don't give me this point or give me this percentage. It's kind of like the writer's strike, right? Like, isn't that what they're essentially it, fighting for? Like, they're fighting for residuals and... Residual. Mm -hmm. That's And points are residual gotcha. in music. That's, gotcha. that's it. That's the okay. word I was looking for anyway. Points are residual to the same thing as a person who wrote a TV show. I don't want to have a song on why it's on the radio getting money and then when it's not popular no more, I don't get no more money because it's still going to play at least... But that's how artists go broke a year. too. That's how artists go broke. What after yeah. after the song is no longer popular, the label is still getting paid. And you ain't getting the producers no points. are still getting paid, and it's like when people don't want to hear you perform that song anymore. You know, it's kind of like yeah. Or you can get smart and be like, no, I'm locking in long term because this song could a year from now end up being on a commercial, Chick Fil A, GMC. We see it happen, but a lot of the people who didn't know how to negotiate points or didn't have a deal or somebody trusted representing them, they just come in, the, in a situation like, oh, I'll take that, I'll take that 40000 or 20000 And it's like, if you had a, got the points on the record, over here looking this is like forever. Dummy. How many points did you get from Cardi? This is legal stuff. Okay. Legal stuff. Okay. Uh, but was it nice? Was it a no, nice? No, no. And let me clarify. The song session that I did for Cardi, my verse didn't get put on that album. Okay. So I didn't get no points from the Cardi but I was a writer on the whole project. But my Throughout particular- the entire project. No, so, and it don't go like that either. Okay. So basically, when they came to Atlanta, they put the Atlanta writers. They had sessions for her in California as well. They do this with not just Cardi, all the artists. You know, okay. I don't want to just single her out, but um, in the Atlanta writing session, it was about 11 of us there. I knew then, like, I hope I just get a sentence on this song. I didn't know coming in it was going to be that many people anyway, but this is the game. So um, I didn't expect in that situation, seeing London and seeing all these big people, me even really getting a point on the record. If anything, I would have took the money at that point because I wasn't, I'm just real. I wasn't the biggest person in writing for celebrities, but I was getting there from people talking about different situations that I had wrote for people. But So it was a work for hire. Basically. Okay. And I'm independent. Mm -hmm. So like London and other people, they have situations. So when we coming in, I already know like I don't have a person representing me where it's like we're negotiating. Miss Luciani's getting this. She's going to leave with two points here. I'm coming in by myself. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting there like all of y'all here. He for sure getting pointed. I know he getting it. She getting it. But me, hmm. You're just getting upfront money. Let me, yeah, let me network and take some money out the deal because it's mm -hmm. not like I'm signed to Def Jam. Uh, hourly fee or was it a oh, flat mm -mm. fee? It's a lump sum. Okay. You, just for being there. Just for being there. Okay. You can get paid from for your writing? label to just come and be a part of the the session. session. Typically, that's not going to happen. But some people have just been like, I'm just here giving y'all ideas. I'm not going to get no points, but I want some money off of this. Mm. And they be the ones that you don't see the names on the thing either. A lot of the big mega stars have had like five people that I know wrote a lot of them hits. If you look, it'd be like two names on the song. 
And that's not true. It would be like five of them that wrote that song. But the big dogs that had the big Rockefeller label or so-and-so, they're going to shine and they're going to be the ones to get all the credit. That you'd be having smaller people like, well, I was just thankful to be in a room. I left with some money. I didn't get a long-term deal like y'all, but I got a couple thousand. I'm cool. Yeah, that's what that's what made me say that when when you was talking about how like some people just go in there and get the money and get they, they don't get the credit on the song. Sometimes you don't even see the money for a year or two. So yeah. sometimes I be thinking like, do you want to get a little 40 up front or 20 up front or do you want to wait and maybe the person lose their deal next year? It's a lot. They might get dropped next year. You sitting there like, I'm about to get this big old check. Girl, this person had her baby, got married. She don't even rap no more. You should have got the money up front. Dang, not so the it. back end doesn't even come if if something happens to the artist. It sometimes don't. The artist could have a situation with the label where they didn't dropped her and now they're acquiring all of her stuff. Now you sitting there like, or they shelving a the record. Yeah, what I'm gonna do? I was there. I wrote it a year ago. What am I? Where's my money? Well, she's not with us no more. We're doing this. We're trying to figure this and that and third out. We're not even gonna put this album out now. Damn. We decided to go with something that's else. So it's, much to the music business, and that's why people be really screaming and ripping hair out and be like, "Do a better system for us. Yeah. This is not. This has been going on for a long time." But you're also on TV now. But let's take it to World <laughs> Dreams before that. Yeah, you know, um, how'd you come up with that and Bag Lady and all that? Yeah, so World of Dreams is a label that I started. I actually just started. Um, it, it's not even a year old. It'll be a year and probably about November. So last year I started it. And I had just been doing a lot of research on just labels and music. And I always get asked the question, am I going to stay independent or do I want to sign? And I always say I will sign, but it has to be a position that makes sense. I've been rapping for a while, so I've acquired the money. So now I'm not, I'm not even trying to do it for the money. I'm trying to do it for a machine that can be like, boom, you see her open up here, boom, you seen her on TV, you seen this. That can so press that button. Press the button. The money, mm -hmm. you can do it independently having mm -hmm. fans with the money. So, World of Dreams, someone told me, they said, listen, you need to start your own label. You need to start educating yourself on the label, educating yourself on the points, educating yourself on the small print on these deals and you might not actually ever want to sign. And when I researched that for months and months, I was like, Oh, hell nah. I've worked too hard to end up in this type of label where, yeah, I got a million dollars up front that I could have made on my own, but I signed for this million and I know that y'all own... Everything. You own Luciani. You own the name Luciani now. Like, I'm your slave now, basically. So I took my one of my musical mentors' advice. I started World of Dreams and the purpose of signing, having your own label, when you sign, I'm sorry, when you start your own label, a label normally has a team. We got producers, we got songwriters, we got stylists, we got hair, we got glam. We giving you the umbrella for everything. You just get to show and be pretty, and we got a team working for you. Or you can start your own label, and you can go and bring in a producer to the label, another producer, the mixing person, the mastering person, a photographer, a uh, videographer and have your own team where you can control it yourself. So when you go to a major label, they ain't gonna play with you how they would play with the Amy last year, who was just sitting there like, I don't have a label, I'm not signed, it's just me. Oh, we're gonna take you all the way up through there. But now that I have World of Dreams, it's like, oh yeah, so y'all can't play with these budgets and say, the reason why we gotta take all this money from you and you got to pay us back all of this money is because we had to get your producer, we had to get you a songwriter, we had to get you makeup, we had to get you a videographer. We had to get you somebody to make you a star. Now I'm in a position to say, no, you didn't. You didn't have to spend all that to do that for me. Mm -hmm. So I need more money up front, not on the back end, because I did y'all job. I have a label, it's called World of Dreams. And if you look under my umbrella, I have everything that y'all thought y'all was about to fake spend a million dollars on. Mm. And weren't really spending a million on it. The respect is so different now. And I be talking like, that talk. oh, I should have did this two years ago. I didn't talking know. talking that talk. But yeah. that's a good thing about learning, though. That. And because that's why you don't rush it. Exactly. Because yeah, there's it. people that's going to watch this interview. And these Learn. are people that was in, they, in your shoes. I mean, yeah. there's probably in your shoes how you was a couple yeah. years ago. And a lot of people don't tell you it because a lot of people in this game feel like, well, I had to sign and waste four years of my career with a bad deal. I'm not going to tell you and stop you. Just figure it out like I did. 
That's crazy. The you world, can stop somebody. You guys did Bag Lady. Yes. Let us know about that. Yeah. Shout out to Bigger Rankin. Um, I put out a single called Bag Lady. And it was just a song for women to just feel ownership and just being a businesswoman. You know, a lot of people say like Bag Lady. You got to have diamonds on and all of this. I was a Bag Lady. When I was literally a Bag Lady working at Walmart, like the mentality was speaking it into it happening so if you wake up and it's every day you know I'm getting my own bag I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that I wrote the lyrics for more it's like a more of a chant um, uh, um, speaking something into existence so I wrote bag lady so just talk about going from here to here to there baby steps going up and then in the end you got your success but because you worked for it you know you the bag lady now people can't come and hold it over your head and say well, you did this to get here and now you need to come do it. Like, no, it's independency and having patience. These are two things that people struggle with because to be independent makes your journey longer. But if you stay independent and take your time, you can't really just be put in positions to be like, yeah, she had to do this to get on. Well, you putting yourself in bigger positions because mm-hmm. now you on Love & Hip Hop. Yeah. Uh, how did you uh, get that? Um, opportunity Opportunity um, Love and Hip Hop Actually has came Shout out to Love and Hip Hop too Shout out to Antoinette Media Shout out to MTV um, They paying you good uh, So you doing a bunch of shout outs And he is And he is And he is Bag lady Bag lady yeah. <laughs> But um, Love and Hip Hop Actually has Came for me a few times Over the Last couple of years And each time Was just Didn't even make sense um, to me personally a lot of the times the situations and the stories and the people that I was around it they wanted to kind of highlight it just never made sense for me so this year they came talking right mm. and it makes sense this year so what was the difference the difference this year was me really now I had myself together my life together so they had to come at me different whereas before when I was really going through trying to figure out and just all this, just artists and being a creative, people, big, big, big entities can see it and now they have more power to be like, yeah, we're going to put you on here and you're about to be fighting with her and we're going to make you go do this and fake date this person. And, and then somebody like, going to throw some water in your face. And then I might have to catch a charge again because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Again. Well, what you again. Got, what you caught a charge for before? Listen. The ones who know me now. That was your past life? It, my past life, that was which was is that React Amber? First. Oh. That is Amber. Okay. okay. Which is React <laughs> First, Apologize Second. That's no longer me. But I, is that, I Was that in Detroit? That was right here in Atlanta, in Clayton oh. County, to be exact. Oh. That's Southside. Yeah. Yes. I, and it's so funny. I just did a big charity event with my old Bunkie from jail. She's went on to do great things. She hey, had, how long you was in jail? I have I have <laughs> had my fighting moments, y'all, and I have had some time. Oh, you okay. just fighting, okay. Yeah, I was fighting and then yeah, but no more of that. Oh, okay. okay. That was my I see I've walked so many shoes. I was a bartender for years. I worked in the club, so I was in that lifestyle where it was like, you drunk, but you coming at me, I gotta let you down. Oh, okay. Drunk oh. or not. I have been picked up from my job and, and locked up. Behind bartending in some mess, but Damn. that is old time. No nonsense, <laughs> <Elmer>. No <Damn>. nonsense. <laughs> no come in this bar, get drunk, okay. coming at me. Yeah, and so that's why I really was not doing the show for a long time because I knew like she don't really like me. That's my old boo, which is not her new boo. I'm gonna have to beat her up and then you know like mm-hmm. no. Mm. So it makes sense now. The show is really good. It's highlighting a lot of the music, uh, the brand, my products. And I just feel like it's the light that I wanted them to highlight. You got something off. to sell now. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. you talking about yes. um, your past. It seemed like you was about to go back to your past in the past episode <laughs> where, you, where you and Rennie Rooks, you about to. I was going there, y'all. And I felt so disappointed at the end of that because I'm like, you failed the test. And it was a test that I like have passed like seven years in a row mm. where for seven years, I a girl couldn't even get me upset. I would be like, next. And y'all was arguing over writing. This is oh, what I'm writing about. a record. Yes. What happened? Writing over. I mean, re- arguing over writing. Arguing over what we was just talking about. Um, 
Long story short, and shout out to Rennie because we have since came to a cordial level where I can't say friends, but now we actually can sit in the scene together and be like, mm, I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how we looking at each other. Yeah. But we able to be on the scene now and get our bag. Before it was not that. It was on site. It was on site for real, for real. Mm-hmm. But um, just to speed through it, because I don't even want to dwell on that too long, but mm-hmm. again, I was in a session with a bunch of men. I was the only girl again. No, I wasn't. I was with one other female writer. Shout out to Pineapple City from California. Um, she and I were the girls that were there, but we were in a session with about nine, eight, nine people. And long story short, she and I wrote a song together. And in that session, we were writing for other artists. You in Pineapple City or you in Me and Pineapple City. Okay. Um, Pineapple City and I wrote a record and a year later we didn't do anything with the record because we were in there a writing session so we're all on the email we're just doing reference tracks reference tracks remember this word and a year later you know once you do your reference track the label that you there for they got all your information yeah. you know so a year later if they don't decide to do the song it's the name of the game mm-hmm. but then somebody sent me a DM of an artist performing the song and I was like thinking That you wrote? Yeah The oh. damn Pineapple City wrote I was like How does this work? Is Rennie Rucci rapping it? Oh. So she and I I reached out to her As I'm finding out now After we Almost came to blows It was The people the she was working with the la- Her label? Yes Gave her the song Presenting her songs As if these are reference records this Pineapple City and this Amy Girl, this was just reference records. This could have been for any artist, which was so far from the truth. Luckily, we in a time where we record everything. The whole session, me and her, we're, we got videos, we texting. Okay, what you want to, like, what you going to, thinking about the song? Do you want it to be a song we use? You got a deal. I'm independent. We can run with this record. I'm cool with the people over here, Red Bull. Like, how you want to do the song? They were going to give the song to another female artist that they were possibly going to pitch the record to. Nothing came about from that song. So we were just like, how did it get in Rennie's hand? How did that go? So I reached out to the person who was signed to the person that she assigned, was signed. Well, I don't know if she's still with them, so don't let me be wrong. Was or still is. And he was signed to her. He was one of the beat makers in the session with us. Mm. Mm. So, of course, we pulling layers down and we figure out who it was. But where her and I, our beef started was, when I reached out to her, I was respectful. I'm like, hey, I'm Amy Luciani. Like, I wrote this record with this girl. I know this is on YouTube. You're performing it. I don't know if you know about this, but this song is a year old. I send her every anything as an artist that you would have needed to be like, oh, hell no. Let me call somebody. Actual, oh, factual, factuals. Mm-hmm. And she went off and blocked me. So from there, baby, I'm from Detroit. It was up after that. Damn. Well, was she trying to say she wrote it or she... She, she was saying basically... Heffa, take that up with whoever you was in the studio with okay. that day. And I I felt disrespected behind it because I felt like if it had been the other way around, I'd have been like, hey, I want to say it too much to incriminate myself just like she didn't. But I would at least been on some, let me figure out what happened. Did she take parts of the record? Because like we were just talking about how rappers want to take credit for writing their own raps and stuff like that. Was it the entire record she took or just pieces? It was a two verse record in the first verse was my entire verse okay entirely and you didn't get no money so you look I got like, nothing I was sitting money? there for a year like I hope something come about this because we were in there for days doing this mm-hmm. but again you might get a call in three months hey that record or it could be two years so you don't call and be a bugaboo and be like hey what about that record you just sit back mm-hmm. and let be the patient. thing do its thing yeah. so I felt disrespected from her message, long story short, which led to me taking to social media because I knew this going to get my answer. And it did. As soon as my video went up, the song was taken down. Although it was put back up at some point, it was put right back up at some point, it did get took down. It was a couple major artists on her deal that had reposted it. I looked up, they took it down. So I'm thinking like, okay, we about to handle the business. Cause I'm not a drama person. I just mm-hmm. want to handle the business. Yeah. I'm owed some money if your label gonna pick up the song, but how y'all pick, gonna pick up a song that me and this girl wrote? H- how does that work? So I was just vocal that year, like y'all not gonna keep playing with us girls like this. We know it'd be a lot of y'all guys that do the, these writing sessions, but we're here now and we're slowly in here writing. Give us the credit. Cause if it was a guy, they would have been in there ready to fight instantly. 
They wouldn't even play with them like that, the men. So did you ever get your credit? No, money? I never got my credit. Oh. Still to this day. And it's still up. It's still up to this day. Um Did you never want to take it to court or I honestly was gonna take it to court. Me and the artist, me and Pineapple, we were in chats with she signed and her people, which I don't even bring them a part of the mess, but we were all talking like, what are we gonna do legally now? We're not gonna play the homegirl game. This is legal. This is this is theft right here. And we were going back and forth about it. And a lot of people around me on my team and friends of the industry were warning me and telling me like, you know, you always got to play it smart and think on your emotions. When you want to go big on these people that she signed to, it's like, do you know who she signed? Do you know who she signed to? Yeah, I know. I, okay. I know who she so, signed to. Like, do you want to go? She signed with Wolfpack. Yeah. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is an entity of QC. Yeah. Okay. Which is an entity of a... Uh, and they're big. Yeah, they, they under a big umbrella. Yeah, a big umbrella. Mm -hmm. So do you want to essentially that. fall out with, pe with these people? Because they could just blackball you. That happens every day, B. So... Are you scared of that is the question. I, I'm not scared of it, but I'm a money maker. Mm -hmm. I'm wise enough to control my emotions and be like... So that's why you guys are not, you, you can be in the scene, but you would feel better if you got paid. For sure. Mm -hmm. We should be paid. Yeah. But we should 100% be paid. We should have been paid. Mm -hmm. Um, But th this industry is, cr is, 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 is so many unfair, unfair situations that I don't want to be the artist to keep being vocal about. Because I be needing people to stand with me to look you, you like me. You seem like rep Monique right yeah, now. Yeah, and I don't want to be that person. I'm not in yeah, here to you, advocate. Yeah, you don't want, want to be that person I don't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. I silently throw my little chips out and be like, yeah, us girls do be kind of done unfairly when it comes down to these writing sessions and writing boards and references and stuff. But I don't want to keep saying it because now that's overshadowing what I'm trying to do and who I'm trying to be. Mm -hmm. And then you also coming up, you got to be careful with who you really ready to go to war with at certain points of your career. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm the biggest artist in the world and to be mm -hmm. sitting up there like, I'm taking y'all down. Or but did you, you take yourself now, down? Yeah, now you on the same uh, playing field with her. But uh, that's how God show? worked. Okay. And that's why I wasn't ever tripping. Because mm -hmm. I know how it worked. So now it's funny because it's like, God to do that loop real quick and you just be sitting back like, hi, remember me? What was her reaction when she first seen you on set? Which I saw on TV. Didn't want to speak. Didn't really look at me. Didn't. <laughs> oh, it, was, that it was what you saw mm. clipped down because it was a long conversation. So it was what y'all saw clipped down for sixty seconds. Yeah, it was like instant. It's like it's because it, when I <laughs> when I saw the clip, I was like, damn, like they got they must got, got some smoke outside of this because it was like as soon as no, it was so much yeah. more. Mm. And just how I am with everybody, I just like I said, I know my power, so I know how to talk to people in conflict because it's either two things we gonna talk in conflict or oh my old background my old thinking it was okay because where I'm from nah, nah, we now. can't go back to Detroit now, yeah, now. We that was the we, old we've been progressive now conflict gonna be talkable or we gonna fight one of us gonna get hurt out the situation and how do you find the balance of giving you know your new opportunity on Love and Hip Hop what they want which is drama field yeah and trying to highlight your businesses and your music at the same time how you, what was the question? How do I? Like, how do you balance them both? I'm still learning how to do it to this day. Because this is your um, first time with Love and Hip Hop, First right? time. Okay. This is my first time. Um, how I'm balancing it out is, I think it's just having a strong mind. I'm, I was a fan of the show. I watched reality TV anyway. So I knew 100% what I was stepping into. But I just felt like with my approach was different because shout out to a lot of the girls that were on the show before me. But my situation is different in terms of I have kind of the opposite of what a lot of girls needed when they started the reality show, started loving hip hop or these other shows. My career worked in opposite. I had businesses that made millions of dollars and that's how I bought the mansion, that's how I drive all these cars off of me. I just didn't have the musical success. A lot of girls had the opposite starting off. They were super broke but they had the musical clout. So my stuff worked in reverse. So where a lot of the girls came on the show and were going through real life situations, some were homeless, some were really coming out the strip club, really moving to Atlanta homeless and the show threw them to the woods out there. Like, let's show us how homeless stripper lives. My situation is different because I'm coming in now like, 
it's different. Like, I'm good. And real quickly uh, for the audience, what were the businesses that really set you up financially? So um, my first business that took off was a hair business. I had a hair company called Luciani Lux Hair. And my hair just took off. I started off when the buying, selling vendors and building people's websites before e-commerce was like a conversation. Um, luckily, I had a neighbor who was in it and he taught me about it. And we started this big e-commerce business with hair. So we just to speed through it, we would either build you your full website, get your hair, get your website, get your tags, get your LLC, get your EIN. We did everything. You will wake up the next day for a small fee of a couple thousand and wake up to a fully running business ads. Just everything people are doing now. A one-stop shop. One-stop shop. Mm -hmm. I was blessed and jumped on that wave when I first heard about it years ago. And just took the chance. I was like, I don't know what e-commerce is, but let me try it. I built a wholesale um, hair. I didn't, but my one of my partners built a wholesale business where you never had a business before where hairstylists could come to my website. We know you need hair all week long. You're a hairstylist. I set it up where I was having it like, you can buy a wholesale from me. I got everything you need. You need tags, you need bags, you need lashes, glue, everything wholesale. So I just came into honestly a lucky position before e-commerce, a blessed position before it was like, e-commerce is the wave. Now everybody drop shipping. I was doing it six years ago. So that started it, which led to my product that I have now, which is called My Pretty Kitty. It's a um, bikini product for your bikini area. It's a three-step kit. Like Nair or something? No, yep, but it's all natural. So mine is all turmeric based. I have a turmeric uh, bar of soap. I have a cream and a turmeric oil. So my pretty kitty is what kind of did the rest of everything how it was supposed to go. Okay, so yeah, you got products to sell, man. You ain't got time for the drama. Maybe but you ain't you know. trying to. Yeah, we know Rennie is not one of your favorites. Any more of your least favorite cast members? Um, all them heifers. So, nah. <laughs> now you no. gonna have to be careful now. <laughs> they been a jump my <laughs> jump me my. Um, you know what? It's it's reality TV. Yeah. Everybody got a personality. I have come on the show on a scene where I had a lot of personal stuff and I wasn't the most pleasant. Cause it's like I got real life. Now I got this camera in my face and I really don't like you. Mm-hmm. And I half I like you. So uh it's just reality TV. I don't look at any of them, even down to Rennie, we we just we're out the country together and like that's my stomach growling. It's just business. Yeah, it's just business and it's a show and I feel like with all the adversities, the best part to prove you're a businesswoman, you want to be successful is I try to think of the money and I look at stuff like I'm not trying to chase the bag away. Mm-hmm. And you do too much, you be too ghetto because you could push the ghetto envelope you can scare the money off. You could do too much. You could say too much. And although I'm on a show that I know is more drama driven, I'm standing behind my products on the show. So we could do all this cat and That's all dope. this. All of but we gonna highlight. We're going to highlight my products. I don't come on set without it. I don't <laughs> like come Candy. on set without it. Candy does that on the Housewives. Like, so smart. Give them what they want, but at the same time, promote your product. Promote get, the, product. get these products. You know what I'm saying? That's Bedroom dope. Candy. That's uh, dope. Because why would you be on this national TV show not with your product? Squandering your opportunity. But you won't believe how many of them on there doing it. Not showing and have products and services and just I'm on TV so let me just be the baddie and I'm sitting up there like baby I'm not but trying to be the baddie. Everybody ain't a business woman I'm like trying you. to be the bag lady. I'm trying to be the bag lady, not the baddie. But mm-hmm. it's TV, so some people get it confused. I'm on here for a purpose, yeah. mm-hmm. and although I'm loving just the new opportunity, um, it's so different just being mic'd up. Have just I've never been in a place where I walk into and it's a few girls that don't like me and we all in the room and I'm looking like oh we can't be on no street stuff today. We're mic'd up. We're really TV stars now or TV mm-hmm. personalities. I'm being taught. I'm learning stuff, too, in this experience because I'm like, typically, I wouldn't even be in a room with you. But I have to now. And I got to be nice. And I got to listen to you talk. I really want to slap you a little bit. But, you know. Damn. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, Ferrari has been texting me. Um, and he he won't leave me alone. He told me, uh, ask you. Ferrari said he thinks you and Mozzie are back together. Oh, my God. I was sitting on that mail at night. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I was with that ex last night, y'all. What yeah. happened? Let me see how to tell the truth without making him look so bad again. Uh-oh. Uh, 
We were together six years in the last year of the relationship, which was last year um, when I broke up with him, dumped him, left him like a bad habit. It's like, nah, uh, it just wasn't working out the way it was going the first couple of years. I think that when we kind of start coming into money and finances and it's like, oh, we in this mansion. Oh, shoot, look at our cars. My mentality was, oh, we got to keep these things that we acquired. Like, mm-hmm. now we got to work more. Mm-hmm. And just our backgrounds were different. Um, he's not the only child, but he has a little brother that's like 10 years younger than him. So he was raised, raised like an only child. child. I got four siblings. I always was like, do more, do more, save, be responsible. So I think our backgrounds, once we came into money, money can, he didn't change because money, I didn't change. But I saw like, oh, shoot, we were supposed to be like planning for this big wedding and I'm saving up my half of what we're supposed to do and you're supposed to be working on this. And I think that when we came into the money that his mentality felt almost like we kind of made it. And I was just like, we have not made it yet. Yeah, you're, mm. his is more, we can relax a little bit. He's got a little comfortable and you're like, no, we're still on edge. Yeah. We have to, I feel like it's work to get in, but work harder to stay in. Right. And I, can, I can't curse on here, clearly. Yeah, you yes, can. Yes, you can. Oh, I can. Yeah. Say whatever you want. Oh, child, I would have been cussing like a motherfucker. I know, I but uh, <laughs> he told me that when we became financially uh, more financially stable or successful, that I turned into a bitch, basically. He said, I, I turned into like, I will wake up, and this was true. Like, I had vision boards, and I would be waking, like, okay, so why are you, in, you were supposed to do this? Like, because now again, we have to keep these things we acquire. So, in his language, a bitch was like, you a little more like acting like my mama now. Like, we're gonna keep this house, we're gonna keep these cars. But for me, I felt like we have to sleep less now. Look at this big ass house we just got. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of scary. It's, like yeah. And are you? You're the oldest, right? Of your four siblings? No, I'm the second. Second oldest. I got okay. three younger and one older. But you still mm-hmm. have responsibility. You screw up with a responsibility for so sure. You can't like just drop the ball because if you don't work, you ain't eating for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have kids? No, we don't have kids. I don't have any kids. He has kids. Okay. So that was another thing. I kind of felt like. I don't have kids yet. My goal was I wanted to buy my house. I wanted to get married. I know I, I'm I'm backwards. A lot of people say get married in the house. I knew I wanted to get the house. I wanted to live with you. I wanted to, mm-hmm. then I wanted to get married. Then I wanted to have a kid. So we had so much in order. And I felt like when the money came, it was like a shock for me and it was a shock for him. But we reacted two different ways. He reacted in like, we never had money before. Like, let's just enjoy it and live it. Like we look, look at today, right now, let's go shopping. And I was like, I start acting broker when I got paid. I was like, <laughs> oh shoot. I understand that. <laughs> oh, 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 we can't lose this again. Like, I understand that because you don't want to go back. No. And so we were arguing a lot. And he used to be like, You're not my mom. You acting like a little bitch. And I'm not trying to be like you, like mother hen holding on to the money. And how much did you spend on that trip? How? And I was on But that's that. what rich people do. And that's what rich, I have learned. Rich, rich, and like rich you people. Say, BT, you know, you save your money, your money will save you. Yeah, you save that. your money, your money will save you. I tell people that all the time. I tell family members, man, don't ask me for no money, man. Save your money. Because my money go, going to have to save me eventually what? at some point in life. Just imagine how many people were scared when the pandemic happened and still struggling man. to this day to build themselves back up. And we, our lives were the opposite when the pandemic, because we were the YouTube couple of the year for the last couple of years. So mm-hmm. with us, we came into so much money during the pandemic that it was it almost wasn't fair. It was like people in the pandemic are not watching YouTube more. Yep. So our stuff went up five times. We was already killing it. I was thinking like in, during the pandemic, like, oh my God, look, look, we bought the mansion in the pandemic. We bought the cars in the pandemic. And I was thinking, like, when I started seeing the pandemic, how it was affecting people, I started trying to hold on. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I felt like with him, we just had two different mindsets. He he lives like today. This is today. We got this today. You want to go on another trip? And I'm so the opposite. I'm like, Mm-mm, we could be broken a year. But that's how y'all got it, though. That's how we got it. And the bickering just got too much. And then... You, I'm sure from a male perspective, when we start doing too much bitching and stuff, it just go downhill. But I'm not gonna stop. Yeah, bitching. yeah, it just it just go downhill because I feel like in y'all situation, you guys are, are business partners, and then y'all have to be relationship and you know, yeah. googly goggly yeah. and stuff like that. And I think you know, as a man, it's like once it was like once you start doing the bitching, 
it's, it's a wrap. Just, it's yeah. Just, yeah. But then from a woman perspective, you know what I'm saying, sis? When we start looking like, uh-uh, I'm supposed to be marrying you. And then we got to share the you money. Gotta, you got to look out for, <laughs> you you gotta, share this money. <laughs> you got to look out for yourself. Come on. Like, and it's not even to be a, selfish or anything like that, but you know, you could be left and destitute, you know what I'm saying? Factual. You have to look out for yourself because mm-hmm. if you've been broke before and you got some money, you do, you do not want to go back. You Man, do not want to go back. You I, almost do anything to not go back. You know why people call me? What? El Cheapo. When I came into my financial blessings, I became the cheapest person. I used to spend more money when I was broke. Yeah. I didn't even have it, but I used to somehow, I always was. That's how it goes. Somehow I had it. I always mm-hmm. had it there and I was broke. Mm-hmm. With my money now, my mom, she laughing me. I, without even talking about the number, I was somewhere with somebody and I was, I got them to go so long on their number and my mom is over my business. So mm-hmm. she obviously is over Shopify. Mm-hmm. She see what the products do. When we walked away, she said, bitch, you better ever come in here with your jewelry on. And get nobody to go down on a price like that. I can't believe he did it. I said, "Yeah, this is what I." That's do. a good businesswoman. But you know what? White people been doing it for years. For years, yeah. rich white people. That's why they stay rich. They're not in designer. Like to this day, I don't wear designer. Mm-hmm. Only thing I care about is I. I just like jewelry for some reason, mm-hmm. but I don't wear designer. So what's been your dumbest purchase since you've gained money? A bag, a purse that I bought before. How much was it? Sixty six hundred. And it was so stupid. When I when I left back, when I left with it and just kept looking at it, I started adding up all the studio hours and how much it cost and how much I said, you could have got four music videos out of this. You could have did this. It was the dumbest thing ever. But I got hyped up again. Used to be a broke bitch. Had a little dollar that day. Mm-hmm. and was like, I've never done this. Why would I not? I've always actually wanted that as the broke me. That was my one time doing it, though. That's the difference with me and a lot of people. I did that once. I respect that. But sometimes what? it's okay to work hard and then reward yourself mm-hmm. with some things. What what number do you think would you would feel comfortable enough to, you know, splurge on yourself a little bit? Another splurge will happen when I make another million dollars. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because if you if you make the million, which I have made it with Pretty Kitty, I've done it more than once. You take off half of that away. Cause you had to put it right back in your product. Yeah. Now you took the five hundred off the one million that you made. That's gone. Mm. And then out the next five hundred, you go out to spend fifty to seventy a month on advertisements, which is gonna make you probably spend fifty. You probably might make one hundred and fifty off of the fifty you spent. But that that million go down so fast. You ain't got time to be talking about a hundred thousand dollars shopping spree. How hard was it like, to get the first million? It really wasn't hard for me, honestly. Again, and I'm being humble when I say it. My mom has always been an entrepreneur my mom gotcha. had a cheer and hip-hop business my whole life my mom has always had a business so i've always been a frugal person to know about saving because of her so i made the million and it was like i kind of really for real for real made it in seven months when i made my product mm. and i was like oh shoot and then <laughs> spend all spend a lot of it to do it again that's just how i go but to go back to y'all relationship and you guys, it, essentially it was money that it was divided money. you guys. Uh, yes. What happened with the channel? Uh, what channel was it? It was uh, our, we had a, not a family channel, but a couple channels okay. called on the YouTube. Amy and Mozzie Show mm-hmm. on YouTube. Did you guys divide it or it's just there or? No, he kept the channel. Okay. And I was vocal about, I didn't feel like he was supposed to keep the channel. Um, a lot of people said he should have. But he started the channel years ago before we ever met. Okay. But he never posted on it. Mm. So now you and me and we're together and we're been like this viral couple for a little mm-hmm. minute. So we take it to YouTube. I felt like, honey, when we broke up and I dumped your black ass, this is our channel. Mm. And I felt like I should get the revenue still 50-50 like we've been doing for years. But he felt like, no, this is my channel that I had three years before I ever met you. And we're not together go start your YouTube channel. This is my channel. Mm. And he took all our videos off, but I kind of felt like you still getting the revenue from the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers that you helped build. That I helped build. Um, But our breakup was just so different. It was so weird because I kind of felt like I kept the house. I kept a lot of the stuff that was in my name because I had the good credits. (laughs) And then I was like, you had a YouTube. You about to make a lot of money off of it. I didn't want him to go down and just be depleted without that's crazy so I walked away from the YouTube my team was like this is legal you shouldn't do it but it's like this is my ex 
I'm not trying to go to war. And although in a nutshell, you can say we broke up for money. I think that when we really did the breakup, I realized like looking at him and him looking back at me, I'm not changing. I'm going to always be that girl that is frugal, that watches the money. I balance it well. Did y'all ever get back together? Will we? Yeah. Um... Somebody gonna have to change. I that that part. I had him blocked for a year, and on our one year anniversary, I unblocked him. Mm. And when I unblocked him, he texted you. No, he called in text, and I was like thinking, what? How did that happen? Like I just literally unblocked you. You wouldn't know I unblocked you, whatever. And he was like, I literally every couple days text you, and been doing it for a year. Wow. And I was like, I was missing you too. But do you think that, <laughs> but do you think what kind of person do you think you would need? I want a person that's business minded. Mm-hmm. I like a person when I wake up in the morning, I like to talk about business in the morning or hypothetical business or a business idea. I'm I just I'm turned on by business. Even watching other people be great, I love it. Mm-hmm. I just be like like I just like business, so I'm attracted to people who go get don't us. talk about the bullshit I like a guy who hold me accountable if I say I'm dropping a mixtape on my birthday June 3rd and on June 2nd I like a guy like what's up accountable I don't like a guy to let me lead cause I'm, I'm aggressive already so so you want an alpha gotta have an alpha but then you gotta let me be an alpha too so that's why it kinda gets weird <laughs> yeah that's that is one of my personal struggles cause I am very alpha like my mom and my ex fiance is an alpha for sure but my thought is you can't be an alpha if, how can I say it nicely? You need more of a laid back alpha versus a dominant one. And sometimes you just got to be a season where you got to be less of the alpha than me. So if I have showed you like with these business practices, even down to his businesses, helping him, he starts it, but I'm behind it. I know the credit. I know business. I know mm-hmm. loans. I know all of that. Thanks to my mom. Mm-hmm. If I'm the one helping doing it, now look at all the money you got now. I feel like people should learn to for a short season it don't got to be forever but in a relationship I felt like it was a season where he needed to be like Lou which is what he called me she know the business let me step back see I'm good with the YouTubing he's an artist he good with that but my girl is good with the business if you too stuck on being an alpha and you know you're not good at that but because you're an alpha you gotta act like you good and be over me and that's what I felt like started started happening because Mm -hmm. My success and my businesses, I felt like with him, he started kind of looking like you a little rich, used to be broke, bitch, when I met you. And now you're acting like a know-it-all, bitch. I, you were broke when I met you. We have so much. It's so many layers. He didn't change us. with you. That is how I felt. Mm-hmm. I felt like he thought we had made it and it started scaring me. We had a wedding plan eight months before I broke up with him. And I was like adding it up and I was just like, maybe we rushing this. Like, I don't like how you are with money. You don't like that you say that I talk and you feel like I'm the alpha man over you and you're the man. And I ain't changing, but you're not going to do better with your money. But I got to quiet down. So I broke up with him. Did y'all ever uh, want to do therapy or seek therapy before that happened? No, I'm I'm different. I don't believe in that. Okay. I don't believe that if you find a person who is sh- proved to show like, I keep everything, everything in my name. I help me, hold me down. And now I'm with you and suddenly I need a therapist to work and date you. I just don't believe in that. <laughs> I don't believe in that. Is that wrong? Like, so you don't believe in relation- couples therapy? No, I, I do <laughs> if I became the problem. But if the only thing you saying I need some therapy is because I'm too alpha, I challenge you and say, why do you think I got to be so alpha? You're not being responsible with our money. So you're turning me up more because I'm I kind of like hyper. I'm like kind of nervous now. But what if it's not just for for you, but like for him to understand you, a person that can a third party that can like help you guys understand one another. Um, Before we get to that point, he has to understand that it's just you need to save your money. Mm. We can't skip over it. But that's it's, that's why most people divorce is, is over money. money. Mm-hmm. And it ain't that it's on some gold digging stuff because he good and I'm good. I don't need you for money. You don't need me. It was over money because we're about to become one. Yeah. I'm about to be your wife. I'm going to have my first damn baby. Like, I don't, I'm not comfortable. And I, I was, I felt like I was screaming it. And it got to the point where it was like, you ain't hearing me. 
So we got to break up. But y'all are, you know, kind of in and out each other's lives right now. Right now, I have forgiven him. He has forgiven me because we did a lot of social media mess that he did it first. And then I followed <laughs> it and it wasn't right anyway. I followed it with some ignorance matching his energy. And it was just disappointing to the fans for both of us to do it. So where we are right now, believe it or not, when I left my fian my ex fiance. I left him to get back with him. I, it was supposed to be like a shakeup almost. Like, okay, Change. so I've been saying this for about two years now. We've had money for two years. You're not listening? Watch this. We're done. And here's the ring. Like, that was what it was supposed to be. I didn't think it was going to last 15 months. Mm. But now 15 months went by and I'm blocked on. Like, dang, it's been a year. Um, I actually unblocked him right around two days after um, takeoff, unfortunately passed away because mm -hmm. it, it was like on my heart I'm like dang life is so short he was such a fan of him it just reminded me so much of him I'm telling you when I unblocked him he was texting and he's like I've been texting you like all those things that you said I had to get together it's 15 months later but sending me the business the this the bank account and I'm just like this is all I ever wanted from you so he, come over here and get this Gucci uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's giving you what you want now. Uh, do you fit, do you see the change in him? I see the changes, and I'm very happy. Although we're still taking it slow, because now it's like we're living in two different places. Now we were together in one house for six years. I see the changes, and I'm so happy. But I want him to keep doing his thing, and I feel like naturally we'll come back. I'm kind of not kind of. I've learned to enjoy liking my place too much by myself, and he's liking his too. And it's weird because now I'm like, I feel like my fiance is like just my little boo who just pull up and leave and pull up. But it's so good are for still now. still fiancés? Well, no. No, I don't think I miss fiance still. I think when I called off the wedding and gave the ring back that I think now I'm just like his ex-fiance. Okay. No, I was just saying, you just said fiance is like my little boo. Oh, so yeah. Just it's, a sure it's a habit. It's a habit. No, he ain't getting the ring back yet. <laughs> But, uh, so y'all gonna, gonna do all this I think he sold, with, it. He sold it Without therapy though right Without therapy I'm willing to do therapy with him um, Cause I know I got some stuff I gotta do alone mm -hmm. I need therapy for some alone issues I know for sure And he knows for sure he does But I don't wanna be the couple that's like Let's go together and heal Let's do it separately. So you're yeah. open to therapy for a, sure for yourself. I've to, already, I'm okay. Currently in it. Oh, okay. How's that going? It's going well. That's why I be able to be like, okay, girl, are you done? Okay, God is good and walk off. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm there, and he was doing it okay. for a minute, and I don't want to get into his business too much, but he was doing it for a minute. I don't know if he's still doing it, but I know in the beginning of the breakup, before I blocked him for real, when he took stuff to social media. Um, he was actively in it and like I was like because I know he needed it for certain things and I did it and I know I needed it but I feel like some of that kind of helped and I think sometimes you just gotta leave a nigga sometimes you just gotta leave him and be like hey just let him know that you're serious yeah because they probably don't believe it and as in love as I am with him still he knew how crazy I was over him so I ain't blame him for being like girl I'm still making the money and blowing the money. You still here six years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why would he think? Why would he think I was going to be for real? But when I really left. That's great advice. How quick for he some, got it together. That's great advice for some Sometimes women. Sometimes you got to um, leave. Mm -hmm. to, you know, to really do it. Because men go call your bluff every time. Every time. But that's good that you guys are doing the work individually. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and him actively doing his part shows that he really wants to be with you and you guys want to be with one another. Yes. You know, in the end. Yes. And he's he's got some really big things he's been working on. Like, I'm just happy. It's the same person that I met and fell in love with years ago. But again, the money, the money will show you deeper of a person's upbringing. And you don't got to settle and, and be like, I'm going to just be challenged for the rest of my life for the the name and the sake of love because it can't be love and coexisting when two people got two different boundaries and people try to say stuff like, oh, you left him for money, Amy. You came up. Money ain't everything. Money is everything. That's why you take your ass to work every day because without it, there is nothing. So money is everything, but it's not, it shouldn't be everything where one person has to be like dating someone and feeling uncomfortable like, I could see us in a year not having nothing. That is not, that's not right. 
We have Amy a bunch of designer. Man, but no. Nah. Listen, Amy, we could talk to you all day. You are so funny. You are yeah. a storyteller. You have great information. You need to start a podcast, boo. Everybody say that. I don't yeah, because you got a lot. You got a lot of uh, life. Oh, uh, yes. That you have and a lot of gems. But we appreciate you for stopping by, man. I could like I could literally sit here and talk for a whole nother hour, but I know oh. we got to go. Uh, before we get out of here, though, we do have a pep talk. What's up, y'all? It's Amy Luciani. You already know the bag lady. Shout out to the baller alert for having me, dropping some gems, and I'm learning some gems. I definitely didn't want to leave the conversation without letting you know you got to bet it on yourself. A lot of us are sitting here putting time frames on our success, time frames on our relationships, time frames on our businesses. If you really are doing what you do from the heart and it's your skill and it's your calling, it's going to happen naturally. So, sis, bruh, bruh, work your move. Don't worry about how fast things are happening. They happen right on time. And it's not on your time. It's on the universe's time and everything around you. So grind, stay in your bag, get that money, stay focused, stay in grind mode. It's going to happen for you.